on the sideline. So it wasn't like the defense was getting gashed. They were dominant for three quarters and eventually broke because you left them out there most of the game. The offense didn't do much. Hopefully it turns around this week, though. But Nelson Spruce leads the XFL in receiving yardage, and he's becoming a star in the league. Honestly, they didn't give him the ball early, but when they got him the ball late, when he scoring touchdowns, he was the one. Those receivers will be interesting, though. Saeed Blacknall dropped some passes, but it'll be interesting to see what they do. And also, Kermit Whitfield, wide receiver, had a good run out of the backfield as a runner. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. And then Montez Carter looks like he might take one to the house as a returner. So, yeah, it was pretty interesting. Anything else on the XFL before we move to the the news of the day, which is the CBA negotiations? Yeah, the D.C. Defenders are, like, honestly probably the best team in the XFL. They're 2-0. So this could either be a massive blowout or an upset or something in between as far as the Wildcats. I think they might get the upset because they've almost, like, they've they've been one-sided the first week. Second week, they got the defense right. Third week, I think the urgency's picking up. I think they will find a way to get a win against the D.C. defenders. Because you can't go 0 and whatever here. 0 and 3, yeah. There's only like 10 weeks. Yeah, you can't go 0 and 10. If they steal this LA. win, that changes the whole trajectory. And with the crowd, the crowd was so behind the team, you could like feel the shaking in the stands. They got to get one. So on that note, moving to the NFL, there was some news that dropped today on the new CBA negotiations. So for those of you who've been sleeping on a rock, there are a number of provisions being approved in the new CBA. Among them, the ones most being talked about are the addition of two wildcard teams, bringing a total playoff format to 14 games, including three games for both the AFC and three games for the NFC on wildcard weekend, essentially giving only the number one seed a bye week. And the other addition being a 17th regular season game and no more last week of preseason. So if you want, you can go to our polls, TDs underscore tangents, vote on the polls. Which are you more excited about? But with that, what what are you most excited about just in terms of those two things? First of all, before we kind of get into the whole weeds of it. I still think the 17 game schedule is a bad idea. Still think it's a horrible idea. The preseason, yeah. The, well, that's probably one of the better things they did was just reduce. You still didn't even listen to me. Huh? You didn't listen to anything I said, huh? I heard what you said. So answer the question. Which one are you more excited about? I just did. So you're most excited about the playoff teams? Adding two. Yeah, I feel like they kind of did something right by cutting the preseason thing, but then they made it worse by making it a 17-game schedule. But the playoffs should be expanded. I just don't understand why. If you're going to expand it, just go to eight teams each. Like, I don't know why you're going to do seven now. not going to do that. Do it for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. They haven't played with the playoff format since 1990, I believe. Really, 2002, when they reshaped the divisions with the introduction of the Titans. But essentially, it's been the same since the 90s. So, who knows how long it'll stay. But I think you should just go to a full-scale eight games. Um, I get you don't want you want to reward the number one seed with something, i.e. a bye week in this case. But honestly, you kind of just really fucked over the two seed. For like no reason, because I, I was listening to the the morning LA ESPN LA's morning show, and I, they cited that like the number one seeds go to the Super Bowl like forty over forty percent of the time, the two seed is like twenty to thirty, the three seed is like single digits. 
oddly enough, the four seed is actually higher than the three seed. The four seed is actually like a twelve percent. The Ravens were like the last four seed, I think, to make the a Super Bowl. T- like a twelve percent. And then after that, it's like a one and two percent. So pretty much you kind of just put both two seeds in the pool with everybody else. Not just that, but like the ringer essentially laid out the the ten, the the added teams over the last ten years. Like, okay, do you want to see the eight and eight Pittsburgh Steelers in the playoffs this year? No, <laughs> that's what I thought. Like, would seeing them play the Patriots would that do anything for you on a Saturday that's night? That's a snooze fest. Exactly. It's on the other hand, you have the Rams, which I I would I would like to, I would have liked to see them in the playoffs, even without you know a Regency bias. They were a decent team and the defending Super Bowl champions, so that 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 one's fine. The year before, the Pittsburgh team that the Raiders essentially demolished by beating them and their whole season collapsed, or Minnesota, eight and seven and one Minnesota. Would you have wanted to see either of those teams? Hell no. The following year was Baltimore, a Joe Flacco led Baltimore, and Detroit. What were the records like? What ten? Nine six? and seven. They're both nine and seven. Would either of those teams have made noise? What was that? That was the year we had Eagles, Patriots. Yes, I want to say. And I can keep going. We got a nine and seven Tennessee, a nine and seven Tampa Bay. I don't even remember those teams. So just no. <laughs> Tampa Bay was what was that? Seven. Mariota's what? Second, third year? That was his second year, so that was his best year. That would have Which isn't saying much. The year before you got the Jets in Atlanta. The Jets were ten and six. Atlanta was eight and eight. Eh. Houston at nine and seven and 2014 in Philadelphia, 10 and 6. That was probably a Chip Kelly team. Or no, that might have been the end of it. Andy Reid, huh? That might have been his last season. Potentially, yes. Then you got Pittsburgh at 8 and 8 again. Arizona at 10 and 6, which that Arizona team was actually good. I remember that team. It was. Pittsburgh, 8 and 8. Chicago, 10 and 6 in 2012. Eh. Tennessee, 9 and 7. And Chicago, 8 and 8. Eh, those Chicago teams are. I'd rather watch paint dry than watch their offense. And the sad I'd thing is, I'd rather play with years, the Chicago Bears in Madden than actually watch that team. I'd rather go on a road trip with Greg Robinson to Mexico. I mean, as long as you're not in the car, like you're in the car behind them, yeah. I'm going to get to that. I just, I can't believe Yeah, we're going to get to that. I have to explain drug culture to people now. Unbelievable. Then lastly, in 2010, we had the San Diego Chargers and the New York Giants. No, once you said San Diego Chargers, I was like, no. You said in the New York Giants? Yeah. So So once you said Chargers, I was like, no. So pretty much the NFL just added another meaningless game. They're essentially going to let their two C get beaten up for another game instead of being fresh going into the NFC Championship and playing the one seed as it should be. They're going to be at a great disadvantage. And and honestly, it half, screws the Saints somehow. And honestly, yeah, it probably does. And honestly, half of the drama of the divisional rounds is like, okay, how are the two by teams going to respond to having to week off towards the end of the season? Because we really don't know. Like, we don't know how sharp they're going to be. We don't know how focused they're going to be. So, you pretty much removed that whole element of shit for us to talk about. So, sometimes when you're winning, you're really losing. So, yeah, we got an extra game of football. Or reportedly might get an extra game of football. But is it really worth the added risk of injury? Is it really worth... The quality of the product. I don't know, man. I got to see, but sometimes when you win, you lose. Now, so basically the CBA right now in its current state is up. It's reported. It was reported today that it was approved by the owners. Not every owner approved it. Some many abstained. A few abstained. 
And so now it goes before the Players Association in which they can ratify it. Players like Leonard Fournette said he's not a fan of 17 games. Richard Sherman said... No running back should be. Richard Sherman said he's he's not a fan. He he got on Jamal... Told Jamal Adams to give him a call when Jamal Adams said it was a good deal. So, not everyone's for it. I really don't understand how some of these guys are just stupid. So, with that, as, as currently negotiated, essentially it will give the... Players 47% revenue share this year under the 17 game format and going up to 48.5% share, um, which could mean as much as 5 billion to the players over the course of the new potential 10 year deal. That's with the approved 17 week season, 17 game season. In addition to that, there's increases to the minimum salary. There's increases to the rookie minimums. There's um, added incentives for second-round picks. There's um, new cap exclusions. There are extra extra opportunities for bonuses. There's more cap room. There's um, increased... Increased amount of definition between who owns players' data. There's going to be renovations to visiting locker rooms required. There's going to be new clinics established for former players. There's going to be a lowered bar for pension eligibility. There's going to be increased um, amount of pensions for players. Players who don't have a pension are going to get other benefits. Um yeah, pensions increased 10%. So, yeah, there's a bunch of shit going on. And and uh, lastly, there's also going to be a change to the drug policy, which will change the testing around THC from testing f- four months out to two weeks out at the starting of, of training camp. They're also going to um, reduce player penalties across the board, but also especially for those who test for THC. It's going to reduce the amount of fines, especially for THC. They're going to increase the amount of you can actually have in your system. There's added incentives for OTAs, minicamp. Pretty much the NFL owners gave the players almost everything they wanted except for a 50-50 revenue sh- share, which is what some of the players are pushing for, have been pushing for, since, you know, they are the ones doing the work, essentially. And the other thing that wasn't in it was guaranteed contracts. So while there is a lot, there's there is more potential for money just across the board and all assets, there's also... Still no guaranteed money, which is important because MLB and NBA have guaranteed contracts. But the NFL, just due to roster size, due to turnover, has shied away from that. And it looks like they're going to be shying away from that again for the next 10 years, which is also the kicker. A 10-year agreement with the way the world is moving right now, with the way streaming's moving, with the way... Online OTT players' data is moving. I don't even know if signing a ten-year deal is really a win because, like those 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 broadcast rights are coming up. I think they come up at the end of next season or the following season. So the NFL is going to be negotiating even higher bags. But yeah, that's pretty much just top line analysis about all the details of the CBA. What do you make of that whole situation, Kenny? Since I just went on a college football size rant. Indeed you did. Uh, here's the issue for me. Again, that 17th game, what does it do? What like what is the honest what is the impact of a 17th game? I'm just, can you answer that? Yeah, I don't. Way? I don't know. I don't know. I like think in college football, when they say, "Oh, we can't have a cha- a college football playoff where all the champions of every conference 
play each other 